Okay, welcome to graphing. And we are going to be do lots of, doing lots of graphing in marine science. Um, but ACE marine science is particular about how they want their graphs. And it's probably similar to other science classes with, uh, in, within the ACE universe. Um, so uh, you're gonna be having to do this on assessments in here and for any labs that we do or other class works that we um, undergo in this classroom, okay? So um, there is a question on your notes that you have to answer. So you should be doing that right now <laughs> while I'm pausing, if you have not done so already. I know this packet's kind of thick, eight pages, but it's gonna be very helpful. And um, this is going to be the first set of notes that is going to be on a, a bigger test, okay? Like your first big unit one test, right? And on Wednesday, we start that unit one with um, water and the properties of water and the chemistry of water, okay? Um, got that answer yet? All right. So why do you think uh, mastering graphs is helpful skill for marine scientists? It's kind of an opinion. Um, it, you, pretty much any answer would have been correct there. So um, let's move on, okay? All right, so there are, there's part one, there's two parts uh, of the notes. Um, part one is the different types of graphs and um, how to define them all, how to recognize them all, and um, why they might be important for what we're doing in here, okay? So line graphs are first, and we're gonna spend probably most time on our line graphs. Um, Continuous variables, like things that don't stop over time, okay? Um, growth of plants, growth of, you know, um, species, uh, temperature change over time, things like that. Not good for live organisms, so taking surveys and other types of uh, studies. And then... Connecting points must be straight and accurate. If they must be straight, what do you think you're going to be using to make those straight lines? Certainly not freehand, not the edge of a textbook, okay? It's gotta be something rigid and probably clear and has graduations on it. A ruler, exactly, okay? So here's an example. This is changes in pH, which is the measure of uh, the, the alkalinity or acidity of um, a substance over time, okay? So, um, and you've got some numbers and lines and data points, okay? But this is, you're gonna learn that this is not what we're looking for right now. There's some things inherently missing from this. Some things that we talked about in the bell work before, most likely, okay? So where is the y-axis? It says raise your hand, but just answer it. I mean, try to in your mind, just try to think about where the y-axis is. And you should know, as A students, um, you should already be familiar with which is y and which is x, okay, on all graphs. <clears throat> so simply put, y, you have the downward part of the y, and that makes the vertical, slope, vertical portion of the graph. That's an easy way to remember it. So if you were a little foggy on that, or, you know, you haven't seen this in a while, you haven't had to use graphs in class for a while, um, just refresh your memory, okay? All right, so it's drawn like that, and there's a diagram of it in your notes to help guide you with that. Okay, so some of this is going to be basic, but some of it's going to get more advanced. You'll see. 
So notice how the scale of the y-axis on this graph ensures that it utilizes at least 75% of the graph space. This is hugely important. If you don't use your space wisely on your graphs and you leave a lot of empty white space, so to speak, um, it's going to detract from your grade on your assessments, on your labs, on classwork, anything that you make a graph for, okay? So you have to, and I'm gonna teach you how to do this later, you have to make your scale appropriate to spread over a lot of the graph surface. Um, and this does a good job with that. At least 75%. So we're talking only leaving this small area of white space here, okay? If you had squeezed this all the way down and then tried to fit the graph down here, that would not, and squeeze these units over here, that would not cut it, okay? So you have to spread it out, and I'm gonna show you how to do that. It's a little complicated, but, so notice how both the y-axis and the x-axis have continuous, evenly numbered scales with no breaks or skips. So you've got two, four, six, eight, 10, 12. The scale is by two, okay? And here you've got seven. You don't have to start at zero. If your information doesn't start at zero, then you don't have to start at zero, right? Seven, 14, 21, 28, so it goes by sevens. Doesn't switch scales in between, okay? So line graphs, again, continued. Notice that these X's are precise. They do not have a dot in the center. Don't ever put a dot in the center. So it isn't a, you don't dot and then put an X over it. You just put an X, a very small X, over the data point, and that's all you do. So be very clear that you don't circle this, you don't put a dot, because at one point, I believe they accepted circles with dots, but I'm not sure if they're doing that. So we're not gonna do, we're not gonna vacillate between the two, you know, flip-flop between the two. We're going to pick one that's going to be the little X's and that's how we're going to plot our data point points on all of our graphs, okay? Little X's. So, so on ACE exams, your points must be accurate from plus or minus one to one half of these tiny squares, of the teeny tiny squares on the graph. I'm going to try to acquire some of this graph paper. We're gonna talk more about how this graph paper is laid out later uh, in this demonstration, um, presentation. But um, just know that when they talk about the smaller squares, we're talking about these teeny tiny little one centimeter or even smaller tiny squares, okay? And, um, so your points must be that accurate, like right on here, somewhere within one to one half of the smallest square. And the grader, the ACE grader, assessment grader, is gonna measure every point looking for that level of pre pre precision. This is from, the, from an, an assessment, okay, directions from an assessment. Appropriate line scale for both axes, that's plural of axis, it looks like the word axes, like chopping, but it's axes. Both axes labeled, including units, all points correctly, plus or minus half small square. So they're looking for precision when you're making your graphs. Um, do not attempt to draw by hand your lines, because look what happens, okay? This is not scientifically correct. For grade school, for Lower level classes, you know, maybe it is acceptable, but not for ACE, all right? So you, you need to be more cognizant of, more aware of your precision with your lines, okay? You can see how that looks all wonky, okay? And of course, do not place a dot in the center of your X that just, this just looks bad, number one, but it's incorrect, okay? And no combination of X's and dot and circles. Just don't do the circle dot. Just do the X's, okay? On, on every graph that we make in here. So cardinal rule, major law here, okay? Applies to all graphs. 
never, ever, ever extrapolate. Now, you can extrapolate when you are doing other types of things, when you want to recognize a trend and then um, kind of foretell what's going to happen in the future. That's what they do with global warming. <coughs> Excuse me. That's what they do with um, uh, temperature changes in the atmosphere and, and lots of things. They look at the data, they look at the trend in the data, and they say, well, it's going up. It's probably going to continue to go up over these next time period. But we don't want to do that in ACE, okay? So, can you... It, so based upon this data that we see here, and so these are data points, okay, here, here, and the, the last data point is right there. That's the last data point. So where's the error? Where did they write data that didn't exist? That's what extrapolating is. Okay, they tried to tell the future. Yeah, and it's right there, okay? It's right here. This whole section is an extrapolation and you can't do that it seems like that would be the case but you've got some quite up and down here you can't assume this is a lie okay you're, you're not you're being dishonest when you kind of do this if you're going to do it on some other coursework or some other thing where you're you are required to extrapolate you have to signify designate with some sort of color change or key or wording that this is an extrapolation so that you are not um, being looked at as making up data that you didn't collect, okay? All right, so the next kind of line is a uh, graph is a line of best fit graph. You may be familiar with this as well, you probably are. Again, this is gonna be a review for some um, and uh, kind of new for others, okay? So there's, this is when points in the graph are not joined with ruled straight lines. The points don't have to touch a line. Instead, a straight line is drawn, so half of the data points are above the line and half of the data points are below the line, okay? And so here's a tip, and I've got some to use in the classroom um, over there, I'm standing over there. Say hi to me. Okay. And in that drawer is where you will find these uh, for future use. I probably have them out uh, on the tables, class set kind of thing, or, or two per table or something like that to use when we're doing graphs. Okay. And so it's going to be a crystal clear ruler. Um, that's uh, hard plastic, not soft, so it doesn't get bumpy. You know, like those old old school wood ones, eventually so many people have run their pencils and pens down them that they get all bumpy and that piece of metal comes out and just, it's a disaster. So just the plastic ones. You should, you should acquire one, okay, for this class and for future classes. So a clear ruler is a great thing. It doesn't have to be a long one foot ruler. It could be this six inch ruler. Okay, 15 centimeter ruler. So it fits easy into a pencil pouch or whatever. It's like a dollar, I don't know. Um, so here's a line of best fit. This is what it looks like, okay? So without too much ambiguity, without too much um, you know, exactness, okay? Um, this is probably the best you could do with half on top and half on the bottom, okay? A straight, straight, right through the data, right? So this is kind of like a visualization thing. You have to almost kind of guess as to where the best fit would be, line of best fit, and then draw it through. And notice how the line stops where the data stops. You don't continue the line to the end because that would be an Extrapolation, okay? Big word. Um, and they could also be curved. So um, I'll sh I think I'll show you a curved one in a minute. So notice how the best fit, you got, I just said that, half are above and half are below, okay? 
So this downhill line indicates a negative relationship. This is a, it could even be just a question on a test, a simple question on an assessment could be what is the relationship between the independent and dependent variables based upon the, your graph. And if your graph is clearly showing a downward slope, then it indicates a negative relationship between the two. So, um, and if it were uphill, it would be a positive relationship. If one goes up, the other goes up, that kind of thing. So cardinal rule again, no extrapolation, like I just said, I said that before. Um, and so here's the error, obviously, right there. <clears throat> and so that cannot happen. Just make sure that you don't do that. If you do mistakenly draw it over with your pencil, which has to be a wood, not a mechanical, a wood pencil, very sharp, we'll talk about that later as well. I have a pencil sharpener over there. It's set to the right setting for a regular wooden pencil. Don't turn it. That's why the tape is on it. Um, if you just erase it if you go too far, okay? So here's the curve. Here's the curved line that's fit. So and these aren't that as easy to make as just taking a ruler and stretching it across. So um, here, um, the best job that could be done, I guess, uh, is there with half the points above and half the points below. So you kind of have to wing it, so to speak, because if you connected these, it wouldn't be a curve. It would be, it would be a curve, but it would be multiple curves in one motion. Whereas this is as straight as possible and then curve at the top and then as straight as possible without deviating to another data point. That's, and this will be clearer when you have more practice with this, okay? So we're moving, we're on slide 23 on our notes, we're keeping up, okay? All right, so here's an example test question uh, asking you to draw a curved line of best fit. So it would say plot a line graph to display the data in table 2.1, include your calculated value for day four, draw a smooth curve to best fit. Okay, so smooth curve of best fit is a line of best fit. A smooth curve, not a curve that goes, oh, curve over here a little bit and then curve back and then, and then come back. No, smooth curve through the data, okay? Here's another example. So here they, they plot the data for you before you had to plot the data yourself. Notice how they're X's, where the data points are, not dots and circles. And then, so this would be talking about Galapagos penguin population uh, versus sea temperature. And um, you would use a ruler to draw one straight line of best fit. So this would be a, a, a not a curve, but a one straight line through, okay? And so it would kind of sort of be like that, right through the center. All right, bar graphs, moving on to bar graphs. Bar graphs or bar charts. Same thing. They show relationships between discontinuous variables. Discontinuous variables. So for example, we could poll the class to determine everyone's favorite color and make a bar graph for that. So this is unrelated to like uh, change over time, that kind of thing, discontinuous. So, um, here you've got the, the y-axis and the x-axis. You've got number of people, number of units, number of things, number of times something happens. And then you've got the instances that it happens. So this could be colors or, you know, number of students, number of students who like red, green, yellow, blue, okay? Number of students whose favorite food is pizza, cupcakes, whatever, okay? So, and, you're, oh, and you, you never do this by hand again, even though it seems really simple. Oh, all I have to do is, you know, follow the line up and with my hand, use a ruler every single time. The ruler is your best ruler and a, and a number two pencil, wood pencil are your best bet, okay? Crystal clear ruler. So the bars must not touch in a bar graph. You might have thought that they could, 
but that's a different kind of graph, which we'll get to in a minute. Um, and they must be uniform thickness. You should not have uh, one, two, three, four cubes thick here, and then five cubes thick here, or you know, two cubes thick here. First of all, just picture what that would look like. It just would look messy, right? All right. And um, don't you don't color the bars in as much as your creativity drives you to do so. This is actually less artwork and more drafting. Do you know what drafting is? Um, they do it, I took a drafting class in high school um, and where everything was on paper with rulers and pencil. Nowadays, all the drafting is done like for um, ar architecture and engineering. It's all done on computers, CAD programs and things like that. Um, so straight, drawing a straight line on a computer is a lot easier than doing it by hand. But on an ACE test, <laughs> there's no computer, it's by hand. So, and in the classroom, we're gonna be doing this uh, practicing by hand as well. Um, so um, don't color anything in. Again, I'm, my point is, is that it's not as much an, an art project as it is a drafting project, okay? Where things have to be precise and straight and clear and neat, okay? Um, bars are also evenly spaced apart, which is very important. Um, and a, a good way to do that is to use the major grid lines. So you can see the darker lines are the major grid lines and the, the, the lighter lines are the minor grid lines. So using the darker major grid lines as a guide for the center of each bar comes in really handy. So you can see how a major grid line goes between right in the center of every single bar. Okay, we'll talk about what's going on with E in a second. So the bars must be fully enclosed also, okay? Part of neatness and workmanship, that whole not a piece of art, more of a piece of science, okay? Now yes, art and science go together in many ways, and I'm very appreciative of that because I love drawing. You, my, you know, you saw that on the board over there. And um, you know, I love art, art, but uh, and science. But at this point, it's, it, we're solid science here. Okay, we can save the art for some other assignments that we're going to be doing. Um, so we're looking for precision here. Okay. So as with all the graphs, um, the scale on the y-axis must be made utilizing at least 75% of the paper's surface. So even though this goes to 10, I could have made it from 1 to 10 right there. Or, you know, here, I could have made it 1 to 10, where each one is a half. I could have, but that's only using a very small part of my graph, and it makes it hard to read. That's pretty much the main reason. It makes the finding data points harder on when you're not using at least 75% of the paper surface, okay? So you wanna spread these scales out as much as possible when you can, using up as much of the paper as possible. So notice the E, here we go. Like I said, we're gonna come back to this E here, okay? The E on the X axis has a value of a zero, but it's still graphed. It's still, you can still measure something to be nothing, to be, you know, no count. It happened zero times. There were zero instances when this happened. And you're reporting that on your graph. You don't just skip it, okay? So there's no bar here. It's, it's just the value is zero. It's at the zero line, okay? So what's a histogram? Now, I taught eighth grade honors science for many years in Hillsborough County, and that was a high school credit class. So um, it was called Introductory Physical Science, IPS. I don't know if they have a high school credit eighth grade course here in Palm Beach County. But if they did, you probably learned what a histogram is. You may have learned what a histogram is. So histogram is, a, well, the term fancy is not very scientific, but <clears throat> you're gonna see that um, it's a more complicated bar graph, okay, bar chart. And they compare groups of discontinuous variables, not just one discontinuous variable, 
okay? And so we could uh, poll period one student's favorite color, graph it, and then compare it to period two, three, and four's favorite colors on the same graph, okay? And they compare, so they compare more than one group. Uh, when comparing more than one group, a key must be made somewhere on the outskirts of the graph telling you what the different bars mean. Otherwise, I have multiple bars touching each other, but you're not telling me what those different bars mean, okay? You may have labeled the Y and the X axis, but what do the different bars mean? So you have to have a key. So here's an example. So um, you've got uh, bar one and two, and then for red, bar one and two for blue, and bar one and two for yellow, okay? And you've got a code, you've got a key up here showing you, you can make, um, yeah, showing you what the different bars mean, okay? First period is uh, lines, and second period is, is plain, blank, open, okay? Um, and notice how the diagonal lines are not excessive. They didn't fill the whole thing in with the, you don't have to go that artistic again, okay? Just simplistic. Simple, horizontal, uh, vertical, sorry, diagonal lines cutting through um, and hopefully measured equidistant to each other as much as possible. Drawn with a ruler, not by hand, right? To distinguish between the two different pieces of um, information, okay, variables. So these bars, um, while for different periods, each represent students who preferred that piece of data, okay? And that's why they're touching. They're only touching because they represent the same measurement, okay? Different numbers, but same measurement. And of course, uh, these bars, while for different periods, represent students who preferred blue, and then these would be for yellow. All right, part two. We are on to part two. How to graph for ace marine. So that's, that was an introduction or a review to the different kinds of graphs and how to make them look nice, okay? Now, here comes the ace marine specifics. So you, you can use those other skills for every graph you ever make, for every class you ever take. So you're identifying the dependent variable from the independent variable. That's what this is talking about. So ACE will always present data tables in the X and Y format. The left column is going to be your X, so that's gonna be on the bottom of your graph, the horizontal, and the Y is going to be the vertical. Okay, and so remember the y-axis always points up and down. So here's another cardinal rule of graphing, <clears throat> and I mentioned this before, always use a wood number two pencil, never a mechanical pencil. Ensure your pencil's sharp, not dull, because you want those number, those lines and those data points to be very precise. Uh, pen is never used on graphs, mainly because it smudges and um, you can't erase it. Not, and erasable pen doesn't erase well, so um, no pen, okay? And it's not accepted. Pens are required to be used on the written portions for uh, visibility when scanning, um, but not on the graphs. So a quick side note on pens. This is important. Pens must be ballpoint pens. Okay, and that is suggested in the testing script. Tests are scanned into a PDF before grading. And pencil doesn't scan well. So um, they use a special, uh, yeah, they, they scan graphing questions specially for this reason. So see, this is pencil um, on written answers. So that's why you have to do pen only. But on the graphs, they use a special scanning procedure uh, just for the graphs, okay? So these are directions. These are directly from the ACE like handbook, all right? That's what these parts are. 
always have to label the X and Y axis, including your units. So whenever you're writing those units and you're spreading them out to use at least 75% of the paper, you're always um, labeling, okay? And look, one common error in plotting the data was to omit the units on the axis label. I see it all the time as a teacher. In every single science class I teach, you make a graph, you put the numbers, but you don't label it. So the person reading your graph has no idea what's going on. You have to do that. Reading the problem slowly, fully, and carefully. Don't rush. I mean, hello. Okay, that's kind of simple, right? And uh, they often rush. They rush. They mess up. And, and sometimes they'll make the entirely wrong type of graph because of it. Candidates were instructed to join the points with straight lines, but some attempted to draw a line of best fit or to draw a freehand curve through the points. Even though they were told what to do, they did something else. Don't be that student, okay? The scale should be linear, another cardinal rule, uh, with no breaks or skips. So here, looking at the Y uh, axis, okay, you've got a scale of two. And then you've got a scale of two. And then you've got, oops, you got a scale of three. That's not linear, okay? You can't do that. And you can't do this either. That's a no-no. You can't put a break. Just because your data jumps from nine to 18 and you wanna save space, you just have to make your scale smaller. You know what I mean? Um, still spread out but you have to just make your numbers. So this would be three, you know, or something like that, or this would be six, and just spread, you know, spread it out a bit more. We'll talk more about that later. Oops, went the wrong one, went too fast. Okay, it's doing this again, isn't it? Okay, um, so on your notes, um, this is slide 47, so this would be, page five at the bottom, I circled it for you, okay? So that's where we are right now. So we're going on to page six. Um, slide 48, top of, top of page six, if you got lost there for a second. Okay, so typically the x-axis is easier to calculate for scale. The y-axis is usually the one that is uh, more of a challenge. So, and we see this in the data table here. So the x-axis is 10, 50, 100, that's easy. I can just make that scale spread out along the bottom. But this is a little bit more of a challenge because the numbers aren't evenly, these are measurements, okay? So this is what you are, are measuring based upon your water depth. The water depth is just straight out. How do we make a scale for that? So you have to calculate your scale oftentimes. Um, correctly or the whole graph just won't turn out well. This is the probably the most challenging part of making a graph is getting the Y scale correct, okay? So to, to determine your Y axis, you need to do a little math and use a little common sense. <clears throat> I don't typically use the term common sense, but all right, so biggest mistake was the drawing of unsuitable scales. The biggest, mis the biggest mistake was drawing unsuitable scales. Um, errors included nonlinear scales, like I just showed you, the 2 to 4 to 7, um, and scales which were difficult to use. So you maybe overthought it, or they maybe overthought it, thought it. So minor and major grids. So again, the major grid lines are these larger ones, zoomed in on the paper, okay? And then the minor grid lines are the tiny ones. Okay, um, so at left, this graph has two or three usable major grid lines for a scale. One, two, three, and then um, the rest are the minor ones, okay? So that's just the difference between major, minor and major grids. You should be using the minor grid lines to help you locate your and plot your points only. So. If you had, if this was, you know, two, and this was four, this would be one, two, three, four, five, six, you know, five, that would be three, 
3.2, 3.4, 3.6, 3.84, right? So if you had 3. Point, oops. <laughs> 3.1, it would be in between here. So you'd have to put your X on, stop touching the screen, on that in between the two at that one half of a square point to be accurate, okay? And of course it would line up with your uh, X data down here, all right? So don't add scaled labels to the minor grid lines. You only put scaled labels on the major grid lines. So this would be two. Don't put, don't do zero, um, 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.81. Don't do that, okay? So how do you make a great scale? <clears throat> you um, must ensure that all of your data will fit onto the space provided. That's important. Obviously, you don't want to tape. You can't tape two pieces, two, two graphs together to make your graph longer. Um, you have to have a scale that will uh, be 75%. We talked about that a couple times already. And most importantly, you must make a scale that'll be easy to plot your points on accurately to half of a small square, which I just showed you again. And this is from the directions from the ACE. Both axes labeled, including units, all points plotted correctly. We said that before earlier. All right. So let's suppose you need to create a y-axis from this data. Okay, so here's your x-axis. That's easy, 10, 50. You know, you can do it in uh, chunks of 50 or maybe spread out or something like that. But here, it's a little more challenging. It's not so easy to determine what your um, clear, you know, um, section scale will be on the side. So um, is it 10, 20, 25? Like, what do you do here? Okay, that's supposed to be a 5 or a 25, it doesn't matter. I think you notice it says 25. Um, so we're on slide 55 right now. So you're going to count the number of major grid lines on the graph. So here is 5 or 6. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and a half, 5 or 6, okay? And then you're going to calculate the range for the Y data. So the range, and this you have to fill this in on your, on, your, on your notes, the range is the largest data point to the smallest data point, okay? So 105, 10, smallest, largest. So how do you determine the range? You simply get that number. I remember, reminder, x is on the left, y is on the right. Um, the range is 105 minus 10, it's 95. It's a difference in numbers you know, between the two. So write that on your paper, range is 95. Next, you divide the range by the number of lines on the axis, okay? So what might be a good scale to use? You'd have to count the number of lines, which was what? We did that already, okay? And therefore, we said there were five, okay? We said five or six, but there's, you can't go to six really, so it's five. So 95 divided by five is 19. Now what do we do with that number, okay? <clears throat> That's gonna be our scale, right? But 19 is an odd number. So what should we do with that number? So based on our math, we need to use a scale of 19 to graph this data so it takes up the most possible space on our graph. But will that be easy to plot our points on accurately? That's what I just said. Probably not. So what should we do? Round, right, okay? That's the common sense part, okay? Um, so we, if we round 19 to 20 and there are 10 little grid lines, in between the major grid lines, how much is each little grid worth? So if we're gonna go zero to 20, how much are these tiny grids worth? <coughs> you, just, you just divide it, right? Okay, so that would be 10 and 
two, four, six, eight, ten, right? Okay, so two. All right. And then um, if we use twenty as our y-axis, we're on slide sixty-two. So we're on the not quite on it's page seven, still on the top. Okay. If we use twenty as our y-axis scale, can we easily plot our points? And of course, the answer is yes. So let's use a scale of 20 on our axis. Okay. So, yeah, take a moment um, and use, how would you know what the proper y-axis scale on this graph would be, okay? Now it's a little mixed up. So you, you have to find the smallest number and the largest number and do that math, okay? And hint, your y-axis does not need to start at zero. We said that before. Um, it could start at 15, 25, or any other number you need. Just any point above must be even with your scale, okay? So you could use a scale of 10 and start at 10 or zero. Okay, you could start at zero would be down there, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, because that is your range of data, okay? Is that the same number? No, look at that. The number changed. That's weird, tricky. But anyway, that's supposed to be a 53. <laughs> okay, I just noticed that. Um, all right, so this one, try this one. Best y-axis scale for this data set. So your lowest number is 1.3, your highest is 2.9. And you've got five major grid lines. <clears throat> okay. So you could use a scale of 0.5 per major grid to fit all of your data nicely. And that would mean um, you could plot um, Wait, easy to plot since every two minor grids are worth 0.1. So 0 0.5, 1, 1.5, 2, 2.5, and then 3. Okay? And then you could easily plot numbers because every other is 0.1. That would be 0 0.05, 0 0.15, 0 0.25. Okay? And so when you're plotting your data, it'd be easy to put the X's because it's all spread out evenly. But again, you don't write these in here, right? I made a note, I circled in your notes that you don't, uh, you don't do that, okay? So if you look, yeah, on uh, page eight, okay, I circled that you don't ever actually label the minor grid lines. That's just there for clarity for this presentation, okay? All right, so what's wrong with this graph? Take a look. This is just kind of a quiz time. Okay, what's wrong with this graph? The y-axis has no scale. There's no numbers there. That's like the first thing you look at, okay? The x's have dots in them. Big no-no, just an x. Don't dot it and then put an X, okay? What's wrong with this one? Take a moment to look at it. It's a line graph. It's supposed to be a best fit graph. And they made it a line graph. The X's have dots in the center again. What's wrong with this one? Well, it's clear that there's too much white space. They didn't spread out. Um, and there's dots instead of X's. And they have extrapolation. This is an arrow. So this piece of, they're just saying, oh, it continues to go that way. This piece, it should not belong here, right there, okay? And it's hard to see maybe on, on, the, on the screen, but um, just pointing out some stuff. And the graph is way too small. So three things wrong with that one. And then the units on the y-axis are incomplete. <laughs> okay. 
What's wrong with this line of best fit? X's have dots in the center, and the Y and X and Y axes are mixed up. That's, I guess that's hard to, oh, yeah, well, they got labeled X there and Y there, okay? So they've got them backwards. Yeah, you can see the data, 1.24, 1.27, okay? Um, that is, yeah. <laughs> so best scale for this data, the answer is here, 0 0.5, 1.0. Answers there if you need to check it. Okay, and then this was just funny. Mountains, get it? There's a pie chart, grass, road, sidewalk, beach, ocean, sky. Haha. -ha. Okay. That ends graphing.